to being able to start stacking off some wins and building off the performance from Sunday? We just got to keep it as, as the mindset of we're going to take it a day at a time. Today was a good day. We got to have a good day tomorrow. Got to have a good day Friday. Um, that's got to be the mindset, and that's how you keep getting better. We went back and watched the tape. Is there anything that kind of jumped out from you about from that game Sunday? Well, we were, we executed really well. Uh, we got to take care of the ball better. Um, but other than that, you know, I think it was obviously our best game of the year, so we just got to keep building on it. Tanner signed to the active roster today. What have you seen from him in practice and in the two games that he played with you? Yeah, he brings an element that uh, is exciting. He's tough, hardworking, uh, you know, really good in the pass game, really good pass catcher, good after the catch. So uh, he's going to bring an element that uh, we're excited about. Brian said that uh, there are two safeties, Hoyer, or, uh, Hoyer and Hyde, very smart, very good. What stands out to you about them? Well, they're great at disguising their coverages. You can tell on film that they're always communicating with all their guys, trying to make sure everybody's on the same page because they do a lot of stuff. Um, so you can tell that that's kind of their role. And then they're really good players. They make plays. They're, they're good tacklers. Uh, it's going to be a challenge. Is that one thing that you think you've naturally become better at your NFL career is understanding with how teams are trying to disguise you. Yeah, I think as you play more football, the more football you see, the the more things you see, the faster you're able to recognize that. Sure, I remember when uh, Anderson completed 20 in a row down in Houston. The guys were like, he doesn't miss you, does he? I'm like, it's like a no hitter man, don't say anything. Did anybody say anything to you that they say, man, you, you haven't missed yet? No, nah, we're just playing ball, just yeah. playing ball. You have no, no idea? Do you think anybody had any awareness that you completed so many? You don't really think about that. You're just trying to execute the best you can. Joe, how much faster are you than Dak Nostein? <laughs> much, much faster. Much, much faster. <laughs> how beneficial is it having a guy like him in your corner? He seems like he's not afraid to tell you exactly what he thinks versus maybe what you want to hear all the time. Yeah, Dak is instrumental in my success. You know, I've been working with him since really I was – 14, 15, uh, he played for my dad. And so he knows my body, knows how I like to work. You know, we have the same mentality. So uh, he gets me right every, every off season and you know, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without him. What have you learned in the last two years about what's expected and needed of a late season push like you guys have had in the last two years? You just gotta keep it a day at a time. You know, you, and I know it sounds cliche, but if you look too far ahead and look too far in the past, then you're going to lose track of, of what you're doing. And uh, you just have to keep your, your nose to the grindstone and, and get better every day. It's, it's cliche, but that's what it is. Is, is it strange being about 500 this late in the year without an AFC win yet in the week nine? I mean, what, what's that, I mean, what are your thoughts on kind of just not having that at this point yet in the season? Yeah, season plays out how it plays out. You know, we'd love to be 7-0. and That's not where we're at. Uh, we just played our best game of the year, and we're going to build on it. Uh, and, and go from there. Is there significance of getting a conference win against a team of this caliber uh, at this point here? Yeah, we're going to have to beat teams like this if we want to get to where we're going to get to. It's a, it's a great team with a great quarterback and a really good defense. Uh, a team that obviously we played in the playoffs last year and we have a chance to play again. Uh, so it, it's going to be a fun one. Is their defense different with McDermott kind of running the show now? Does it look different than it did in January? Well, similar stuff, you know, some new wrinkles. Just like every year, every team has, has some new stuff. but. Um, the foundation of what they do is what they do. Joe, I was wondering if you could go ahead. But uh, I was wondering if you could break down that play. Uh, the two minute, uh, I think you were, you were two minute was real late. That throw to Tyler, I think it was a seam. I guess it was a seam route. It looked like uh, you didn't have a hell of a lot of space there. I was wondering what was going through your mind and what you would think of. Yeah, I trusted TB to. You know, we just called four verts and trusted TB to to wrap across the safety's face. We've we've thrown that a million times in practice. Uh, we both saw it and threw it on time with accuracy, and he made a great catch in traffic. So those are the kind of plays that we're expected to make. Not a big window. It look like no, very tight. But that's, that's NFL football. That's the kind of throws you got to make to move the offense down the field. Joe, well, why do you think this team has been so good at closing out games here? At home or just in general? In general? Just you guys. I mean, you guys just seem like when you get up, you've been really good at putting it away almost every time. Well, we got – Great pass rushers, and when you get up early on teams, you know, and really let let those guys tee off, when 
you can expect pass and you can you don't have to play the run that's that's critical for for those guys up front on defense to apply pressure and get sacks um, so that's part of it and it just seems like whenever a play is needed a play happens from somebody whether it's special teams defense offense um, Sunday we were able to put it all together we got to keep doing it uh, Zach talked about you know there's no fear of failure in the guys in those moments is that something that you can instill, try to instill in your teammates with you as a leader is there's no need to fear failure, but you can believe in that we're going to do it and I can help you know, lead you to whatever you need. You, know, you don't really talk about it, but you, you put in the work to have success in those moments. We got really hardworking guys that are, are really confident in themselves, and you put in all that hard work for those moments to go out and make plays and win big games. Um, that's why we do what we do. You know, Zach has talked a lot about just motivating factors for this team, motivation over the Niners. When he finds those motivating tools, is that something that motivates you, or is it just across the board this team feeds off of that? It's tough to say. You know, we Zach does a great job of uh, laying out the picture for each week and each game and each day of practice, um, how it's going to go, how he wants it to go. Uh, and, you know, really we're just following his plan to, to success, and he's done a, a great job for us, and we're just going to keep going. For you personally, if you always push back, I mean, a competitor does, I feel like, when someone says you can't do something or the odds are against you. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, – anybody can do anything they want if they're willing to work for it. It's uh, – nothing's going to be handed to you, but uh, as long as you put in the work to get somewhere, you're, you're going to get there eventually as long as you don't quit, you know. You know, a lot you and quite a few of your teammates said what a good week of practice it was last week. What, what constitutes that? What, what is a good week of practice in your eyes like for yourself? You just get a lot of work done. You, you, know, not, you put in a lot of new stuff every week, and not every rep is going to be perfect exactly how you want it, but you coach off of that, and you learn from that, and you watch the tape, and you talk about it in meetings, and then you walk through it, and then you come out the next day, and, and it goes better, and you continue to build on those reps. And we just had a lot of urgency, great work ethic last week, and we had a great day today, so we just got to keep building on it. What have you seen from Andre in the red zone? What makes him so effective on the scramble? Yeah, he's, he's physical. He's a strong, strong guy, uh, fast guy. But you know, his his scramble drill. He's got a great feel for it. Sometimes you just can't coach that kind of stuff. He's a guy that works really hard to for his opportunities, and he, he's made the most of them when he's got them. Um, and if you know, he's going to keep doing that because that's the kind of guy you get. He is. It seems like you've talked about trust before. Is that a way of kind of earning your trust? Is to keep fighting, making sure that a play never ends, and keep working. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's earned that. Um, you know, he's a guy that we have a lot of faith in. Always knows what he's doing. Always seems like he's going to do the right thing wherever he's at on the field, and he's going to make contested catches, make big plays for us. Is how game change or calf different when it's cold weather? Does that have any factor on how you manage that calf? I don't think so. You know, it's tough to tell. We haven't had any, any cold weather too much except for today. Uh, but it, it wasn't an issue today, so I don't expect it to be an issue going forward. What do you like and respect about Ted Karras? Well, he's worked for everything he's got. You know, he's he's been three places, and I think, you know, probably hasn't gone exactly how he wanted it to at, at two of the other places. But he, you know, he came here, and he's been, you know, an integral part of of what we're doing here. He's a great player, really smart, great leader. You know, he kind of leads that group up front to you know, really what they've become. Uh, and that's a great offensive line. And the center is the, the key to that. Uh, we, we wouldn't be who we are without Ted. He brings a toughness and an energy that we qu haven't quite had before. So uh, I, wouldn't, rather, I would, wouldn't trade any center for, for any, anybody in the league. Except with the there, was, there was a lot of conversation about Orlando and kind of what he would bring to the table when y'all got him. Was kind of a big Sunday <coughs> example of kind of how valuable he could be uh, in, in that unit when it's clicking. Yeah, he's he's at, as advertised. He's he's a great player, big, strong, athletic, uh, and you saw it on Sunday blocking some of the best edge rushers in the league. He's, you know, we're we're excited to have him. How hard is it to earn your trust if you're a rookie like Andre or for any of the receivers on the team? Um, that's tough to say. You know, it comes with with reps in practice and and game reps, uh, but I, I would say it's. Just just depends on the opportunities that you get. Uh, 
and, and our guys have made the most out of them. It's uh, when you have guys that work really hard to, to get better and they want to own their role on the team, that's, that's the, the quickest way to do it. Cincinnati gets the national spotlight on Sunday. You guys have had this before. Um, and your life is different than most Cincinnatians in some ways, Joe. Um, but what would you say you love most about Cincinnati, what you've been able to experience, and what makes the city unique? It's the people. Uh, you know, that's, that's why I love Ohio. You know, the people are great, down to earth, humble, hardworking, uh, just uh, made of the right stuff. You know, I love the people here, and that's kind of what makes Ohio, Ohio. What, this will be the first prime time, I guess, you know, you all play Buffalo prime time here. What do you expect the atmosphere and emotions to be like after what happened in January? Well, I, I expect it to be to be rocking, you know. It's, uh, it's going to be an exciting game. You know, I know the fans are going to come out and do what they do. You know, obviously what happened is in the past. I think everybody remembers it, but, you know, it's not going to dwell on it. I know he's not dwelling on it either. Uh, so I know our fans are going to come and, and support and be loud, be proud. Uh, we're going to fight our tails off for it. We didn't ask you after the game. What were you messaging? What was your message with the alien mask and mask and shirt? Was there one? It's Halloween, man. <laughs> that was it. Nah. Do you believe in aliens? Jury's out. <laughs> Thanks, guys.